All right, so hello and welcome to another episode of Coffee with Sam Paul. I'm uh, right smack bang in the middle of Flagstaff Hill right now at Della's Cafe. For those that might know my show will know this is the baby sister of the Front Page Cafe. So it's um, a great little, uh, great little location and uh, run by the same sort of fantastic team. Today I've got a very exciting guest, someone I've known for a few years now through the music industry, but it's the first time we've had him on the show. David Barrichelli, how are you going? Very well, Sam. Did I, did I get that right? You did. Woo-hoo. Points to you. <laughs> All right, so I guess the, the place I wanted to start today, because obviously I've known you um, through the music industry um, in various different bands and, and solo and, and whatnot, but I know recently we were chatting and you mentioned you're, you're into management and booking and so forth, so I kind of yes. wanted to, I guess, ask a little bit about how you went from being a musician in band to now doing that as well. Oh, yeah. It's really quite an easy transition, actually, because you got to book gigs for your band, and you have to therefore fill a bill, and therefore you need other bands. And so the booking side is really quite just a a necessity, really. So um, that kind of morphed during COVID. I wanted to really keep the scene alive because I thought, well, we've got two options here. It dies or it keeps going. Uh, I made some friends, made some enemies because I kept them open when I probably shouldn't have. Uh, but yeah, that was great and probably a couple of years ago I stopped the booking as a business and then I, picking it back up again now after going into management, yep. uh, I currently uh, manage two bands even though they're just kind of like verbal agreements, nothing, yep. nothing written down, well signed yet. Uh, one is Haley, which I believe you know him. Is that sorry? Haley. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. Yes, and the other one is a, a solo act called Scott Toner. Oh, okay, I'm not familiar with that one. Mm. No, he has a beautiful song called Artificial Light, and that's what oh, wow. attracted me to his uh, act. And Haley, I've seen them on stage only the once. Yep. During that performance, I saw the the musical alchemy everyone wants to see, where it just all pulls together. Oh, I love that feeling. Yeah, when you see that. and you don't see it very often. And I saw it in them, and I was like, right. Speaking of musical alchemy, when it all comes together, as, as I mentioned in the introduction, you know, I've, I've seen you in various different incantations from solo to various different bands, but I feel like your alchemy came together with the band you now have, which is Trickshot. Oh, yes, absolutely. So correct. tell me a little bit about how, how Trickshot came to be, because um, it definitely seems to be that alchemy that we all look for. Like, I've seen great versions of you through the years, but that is just like, Boom, yeah, it, everything. It, yeah, and I, and it's good to see, you, man. Yeah, oh, thank you very much, Sam. Uh, yeah, so Trickshot was born out of a uh, another band, both myself and guitarist Ian Paul in Carl Dover and 3D. Yep. We were sitting there one day, and Carl's a great musician. Unfortunately, the one thing that irked us enough to start our own band was that we were almost hired guns. We weren't officially hired guns, but we were only really playing his songs and parts that were already yeah, written. Yeah. So Ian and I sat in his uh, rehearsal room uh, one day after practice, we said, oh, I just want to play my own songs. And he's like, a list as long as his arm, I have a list as long as my arm. And we just said, why don't we do something? And so that was with the genesis point. Yep. And you're right, you know, when you get the right musicians in the right positions, I mean, Ian is one of the premier guitarists of Adelaide, and yeah. I'm very blessed that he is part of the band. Yeah. Uh, and it's just, he has all this experience, and I think he, because this is his first original band as well, he's really, really excited every time he goes out. That's awesome. And he's really excited when we get airplay or anything that's associated. But the outcome is, it's, it's building, it's, we're getting there, we're getting tighter and tighter and tighter to play so much. Yeah. Much to people's irk sometimes, <laughs> you know, oh, saturating the scene. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we play to our fingers bleed, as Brian Adams once said. Yeah, 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 nice. You know, but seriously though, um, people may get, as you put it, irked. I, I don't see, couldn't see that happening personally, but I, I think it's absolutely wonderful to see live original music. Like, oh. don't get me wrong, I'm not going to get in the whole debate of cover bands and tribute bands, and uh, you know, but <clears throat> unfortunately. What I will say though is that it seems that because cover slash tribute bands, they play songs that everybody knows, so they obviously draw crowds, yes. so that they obviously get booked and they get paid well, yes. which is great. You know, that, there's a scene for that that's wonderful, but but it's kind of like what DJs did to the music scene back when they first started becoming more prominent, and they were taking gigs from 
hard-working bands like Trickshot. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so I guess, you know, I think it's great that you're out there getting your name known, getting out there playing original music and, you know, sharing what you've got with the rest of the world. Oh, again, thank you very much. It is tough in the original music scene. The money is not great compared to a tribute or a cover band. And it's hard to get... You can only call on your friends so many times, as you know. <laughs> uh, but, you know... We, would, we wouldn't change it. Ian's got a cover band and he's just said no covers. We refuse to do a cover. We do one pass of the song. I won't mention it because you might come see us and be wowed by it. But it's just a pass with a homage to one song. And that's yeah. it in, in one of our songs. Yeah. It's a bit of a mashup. Nice. And it's great. You know, I live and breathe original music, as you know. Yeah. Um, I'm so passionate about the scene, the original scene. Being a bit older, I feel like a bit of a father figure, almost. And there are certain Godfather. people. <laughs> there are certain, you know, bands and stuff. We don't really get near them, you know, and that's fine. You know, we have our little zone. We have bands around us. Yeah. All ages, or mainly rock bands, obviously, but it's there, and people just need to know that rock is not dead. It's not dead. It's still uh, out and going hard. I, I remember hearing uh, an interview, because um, as you know, I, I come from a f fairly hip-hop sort of yes. background. Um, <clears throat> and I remember someone, uh, there was an interview happening and someone got asked, you know, is hip-hop dead? And the, the, the artist said, well, are you into hip-hop? And the guy said, yeah. He said, are you dead? No. <laughs> well, well, then hip-hop is not dead. That's he right. said, because hip-hop is all of us. And I, I feel like rock would be the same kind of feeling, you know, like yeah. as long as there's people out there that have it running through their veins and, and they're doing the music, you know, it's always going to be alive. Sure, yes. it may not always look the way what we're used to or yep. what we what we like, but you know, that's on us again. You know, we we can go out there and create what we want, or we can go, oh, it's all dead and died, and there's only shit music coming out. You know, and at the end of the day, it all comes back on us. You know, 100%. Um, you know, I'm sure that what you guys are making is is a combination of what you and and your bandmates like about rock and and forming yeah. something fundamentally of your own exactly exactly you know if you're not true to yourself in what you're doing then it's really hard to be authentic as yes. you know oh, 100 percent. so um and that's probably where the line between for me personally not hating on anyone but <laughs> the line between doing originals then going into covers kind of blurs yeah and i know a lot of people go into covers of, to begin with to pay the bills and that's yeah smart move really yeah. you're not paying no bills <laughs> the music. it's true uh, yeah. but you know you've got to be authentic and if you don't love what you're doing you're not winning yeah I would probably add to that that because um, being someone that I don't mind a, a cover here or there no. but, but what I would probably say is that I, I love it when a band does a cover but they do it in such a way that it becomes their own song. You know, like a really good example that just came to mind, Alien Ant Farm, they did yes, um, Michael the Jackson. Michael Jackson yeah, cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, it's recognisable as Michael Jackson's song, no doubt, but it's very much sounds like their song. Oh, 100%. Um, you know, and, and I think I think that's when, for me, when a cover really shines, is when the band does it their own way and does it justice as well to the original, um, which is really cool. But you're right, I mean, you know, that, that there is a there is a market for that as you said there's money to be made for that um, you know and I know a lot of musicians out there that are are doing both you know because yes. for that exact reason they'll do their tribute band you know you know a few nights a week and then they'll do their originals once yeah, or like, one right. other week um, and that way kind of they're you know enjoying both sides of it they're kind of making a living from it but they're also enjoying the yeah. you know putting themselves out there and, and creating right. the original so. Yeah. I, I am curious, I, I've seen some promo which would kind of allude to what, I, what the, the answer to my question, but I'm going to ask you, okay. Trick Shot, where did the name come from? Because okay. I've seen a lot of pool. Yes, but um, no, it's just that that's the easy shot, isn't it? Well, it's a trick shot. <laughs> it really is. It really is. No, actually, the name came from a misheard lyric. Believe it or I not. I love that. I Ian, love that. Ian's sitting there because obviously in on Magic Bullet, that's pretty much my writing yeah. and Ian's production. Yeah. That was the combination. And he said, what's the, what's the lyric here? It sounds like trick shot. I said, no, it's just take a shot or take the shot. Yeah. And he said, no, I like trick shot better. That's not for the band. What do you reckon? All right. Sounds good to me. I must admit a band called Take the Shot doesn't sound quite as cool as trick shot. They're no. definitely... But I love that because I'm a, a big fan of these comedians that do these whole routines on misheard lyrics. There's a guy from the UK that does it. 
and he's got like his little recorder and he plays little bits and pieces. Oh, yeah. And and it's both both the double edged sword. Like I love the songs that he uses, but once I've heard what he says that they're saying as opposed to what they're saying, yes. that's all I ever hear. Uh, exactly. And trust me, I've got plenty of plenty of them myself. Like, oh, yeah. You know, like over the years, um, you know, once vinyl started becoming less popular and and even CDs to a point, we didn't get the lyric sheets like we used to get. Oh, so I just had to listen know. to it and, and make it up as yeah, well. Oh, my wife does hate me. I'll just pick a song and start singing random around the house lyrics. Yeah. But yeah, no, look, you can't beat a good old vinyl record. Oh. Even, I mean, I remember the days, this is showing my age here, you know, back in the day at the $2.99 bargain bin at John Martin's. <laughs> found some great stuff there. Oh, but I you know, now at 80 year old plus dollars, it's like, ooh. But I would probably pay that for a vintage record as well. Yeah, I mean, if it's worth, if it's a good one, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and a lot of it's nostalgia. A lot of it's uh, what we liked back in the day, just collecting the old stuff we used to have. And I love that as well. Yeah, I've been doing the same. I've even got a few cassettes. But, oh, you, nice. but you know what I will say? Because you know there's always this argument about vinyl selling better than CDs or, or CDs selling better than vinyl. And, and look, at the end of the day, I, I, know, I know from experience that they've done blind listening yep. by sound engineers who should... Uh, out of anyone know the difference between digital and analog and I think 98% of them couldn't pick it like there was a small percentage that could yeah. but the majority of them, the, the techniques and the, and the you know skills that are involved in recording both ways now it really is hard to, it's hard to kind of distinguish a lot of the time but what I will say is cassette tapes <laughs> they do sound terrible I'm sorry to any tape aficionados out there <laughs> I've got a few cassettes I've even got the new Daniel Johns album on okay. cassette tape because yeah. he did a limited run of, of different eras of his career nice. cover wise and even that doesn't sound fantastic like the cassette player that I have is an old boombox and it's got a tone yeah, off that's your EQ that's really and even when you turn it right up to the high end it's still muffly yeah. like but it's, there's a certain nostalgia about oh, it. You know? I will say this about vinyl though, it sounds yeah. better than Spotify for example. Oh, you won't get any arguments from me. And you know, <laughs> I actually had a lesson with vinyl with my son, uh, who's 12 now. Um, I put a record on and said, here, have a little listen, have a little play around with it, right? And he starts spitting it oh, uh, straight up. Spit, you know, and, and like speeding it up, because I've got yeah. DJ ones yeah. that have got the controller on it. And I looked at him and I smiled and I said, try to do that on Spotify. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, but, you it, know, and the other the other thing Spotify's brought in is the tick and flick generation, you know? We used to sit down, like if someone had a, a new hot album and you did not have it, never fear, you used to have a listening party when it first, the, the, the owner first got it, so everyone used to come in and just exactly. sit around and listen to the, not, not one song and flick it to the next one. You had to drop the needle, and let it play. wait till it finish that side, flip it over yeah. manually and go again. And exactly. They were some of the best days ever. Exactly right. I mean, no, you could obviously skip to the next track if you if you were careful and you knew where yeah. to put it, but it wasn't just a click of a button no, like with no, a Spotify. No. But um, I would also hasten to add though, back then, artists were more writing albums, yes. whereas these days it seems a lot more are writing singles, yeah. and then if they release an album, which I mean they, they still do, but usually it's a collection of those it singles, is. you know, yeah. and, and there's no cohesiveness to a lot of them, which I no, really miss. No, join. Yeah. And a lot of the uh, booking agents and management companies are pushing that line. Yeah. Which is fine, and that's 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 definitely a way to do it. We didn't do it that way, obviously. We just put out the album, yeah. two singles from the album, yeah. Because it was written like Magic Bullet was written in three weeks, yeah. Like, oh, the writing right. process, um, and so they were all very interconnected, and that that really felt like a a, a nostalgic tip of the hat back to the day as yeah. well. Yeah, I, I seriously cannot cannot bring myself to do it any other way like I, a lot of the guys in the hip-hop scene that I work with they all like pop out singles and, and look yeah. power to them if it works for them but I, I personally like I write as, yes. as an album in mind like you know I have a theme I have a bunch of songs that yes. all kind of and and that also helps me decide which ones I put on the album because it's like oh this was a good song but it doesn't really fit on the album you know so then which then also lends yourself to the old school way of, you know, like maybe you release the vinyl and then you want to release a CD. So the CD might have a bonus track, yeah, which is one of those tracks that didn't, track, you know, or, or the hidden track. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I remember, I think it was, it was a Nirvana maybe, I think. There was an album of theirs that I listened to and one day I, I was too far from the CD player to stop it. So it just kept playing 
and I was playing and playing for about 10 minutes and all of a sudden this song comes on I'm yeah. like oh my god what is this that sounds like uh, uh, is it not uh, never mind didn't do that I don't think what was no, the next one I think in, it was in utero I think it might have been in utero yeah yeah, yeah. which is a great album yes so yeah. I actually had the pleasure of having access to one of the recording sessions mm. from that it wasn't one of the album tracks but what, no 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 uh, so I was part of a group on Facebook that was run by an old uh, engineer yes. and he used to run competitions basically you could win like a hundred bucks and he'd give everyone a session and then they would blind listen him and a few other engineers would blind listen to each one mm. that'd just be called mix one mix two mix three and they would then rank them in order and i think with the nirvana one uh, i came fourth which was quite amazing out of about 20 odd engineers sure. m many of whom were more experienced but i actually attribute that to the fact that i was still very much in my learning stage so what I find that a lot of engineers push the boundaries a lot more once they get more experience because they, they, they know what things can do what's achievable and they experiment whereas when when I was starting out I was very like minimalist which for Nirvana actually worked right. in my favor Perfect. so but yeah it was really cool it was I, I think it was called spank through or something or oh, cool. I don't know it was it was a b-side to in utero anyway oh, yeah, cool, cool. and in the session you can actually hear the tail end of one of the other songs just before it starts because they must have recorded literally the whole thing yeah. live yeah you know and like just went back and did overdubs from yeah there. exactly so and i'll tell you the best thing about that was muting everything except for kurt's voice and hearing how incredible a vocalist he actually was because a lot of people say oh you know he couldn't really sing that well and it's like no uh well he, and you have days and you don't have days i suppose well that's right it. but he he d definitely had them i mean daniel johns is a vocalist that i admire and i've even heard him sound terrible yeah, on, on those bad days you know exactly. but, and look, trust me, I've sounded bad for 20 odd years, but all of a sudden it's just all clicked. You know, oh, so. I don't, you're, you're very harsh on yourself, my friend. And, uh, I, honestly, I don't think you'd be where you are today if you were as bad as what you kind of paint yourself well, as. Well, this is true. Well, unfortunately for the industry, I have a knock down six times, get up seven attitude. No, well, I think that's a very fortunate attitude. That's something that I actually speak on on my, on my page, you know, like a lot is... You know, the difference between winning and losing is that the loser stops. Yes. They don't get back up, you know. And when you do that, then then it's game over. You, you'll never know. Yeah. Um, whereas if you keep getting up, you're going to get better. Um, you're going to, you know, learn from it and, and you know, improve. Right. And that you're, you're a testament to that because trick shot is that step of getting back up after all the knockdowns, you know. And, and it's working for you, which is fantastic. That's right. So, and the whole theme of the album is also my life mantra which is no one wins unless we all win i love that attitude that's such a great attitude you know because we don't have to compete against each other no do we? you know we we can all we can all there's win. space for everyone especially in the creative sense and that was what we're talking about alchemy you know yeah to me music is the purest form of alchemy left mm. or in the world definitely and People all, I, I, I travel around and people always to me look so pale and downtrodden at the minute, barely enough too. To me, I managed, luckily I guess, to um, basically just put on a record that I really dig and then it's just like free dopamine. It yeah, really is. It is. Know? So you can always bring yourself up with something. Hopefully it's more natural than other things, but if that's your jam, that's your jam. You know what I mean? But, um, People want a big, massive, high-level win to make them feel better. Whereas the wins are in the minute. Yes. I, I saw an um, interview with uh, Andrew, oh, I can't remember his last name, but he's a motivational guy. I think he's on Shark Tank. Oh, okay. Yep. And he's saying, if you're having a bad day, yeah, you gotta you got to bake the wins. Bake the wins you have. Like, for example, you, you wake up, or you're not dead. There's a win. You have a exactly. shower. Exactly, gratitude. Everyone loves a shower. So you work. You go to work. You know, on the travel, you hear a good song, traffic's not as bad as you thought, there's a win. And in the end, he You've said... You've got a job. You've got there's a job, a that's one too. And then the other thing is, you think that makes you a winner. And you should be rich at that point. But, exactly. You know, people sometimes forget that's an easy way to win. Exactly right. Man. Exactly right. You know, but a lot of people kind of seem to put money into the equation of being rich but to me money's got nothing to do with it no. sure, sure money can afford well, it helps. afford you well, <laughs> that's all it, that's oh look it, it definitely helps in the sense of like it makes things possible that mm. you know that do require money but what i mean is in the sense of being you can be rich and have like only a dollar oh, to your name you know what i mean like yeah. i mean i've got a son i've got a job I'm, I'm alive, I'm healthy, so yeah. to me, I'm, I'm already like light years ahead, you know? 100%. I mean, people really question, because I'm 
I'm retired from working because I yeah. got forced out. Yeah. But that's given me the opportunity to do all the things I love in a very short space of time. Exactly right. So I feel very blessed every day. And people really look at me like, you know, give me the scowl all the time. <laughs> and they say, well, you know, it was an unfortunate set of events that led me here. Yeah. But, you know, I, I'm blessed. I really feel blessed. That's amazing. Um, we, we, we are pretty much out of time now, man. But I, I would like to very quickly get you to let me know or let them know um, where they can find out about Trickshot, because that's oh, really yes. what we're about here today. Hey, so Trickshot obviously available on all streaming platforms. Uh, Facebook, because we're old, is our is our go-to <laughs> platform. Hey, we, we are on hey don't call it old. I, I love Facebook too. That's, oh. I thrive on Facebook. We're a vintage though, man. That's true. <laughs> okay. uh, but you know, we are, we aren't on TikTok. I have to say, because <laughs> that just confuses I, me. I am, but I don't really know how to use it. Yeah, like, not effectively. I, I put a flyer up with a bit of my music playing behind it and that's my TikTok and apparently that's not what you meant to do. Oopsies. Yeah, apparently meant to make little videos. But, yeah, you know. uh, but obviously our main jam's playing live, so. Yeah, yeah. David, thank you so much for coming and having a chat. Thank you. And uh, obviously thank you to Dellas for putting up with me <laughs> filming in their establishment. They're, um, they're a great mob and they, they make really a great are. coffee. Oh, so. they have, oh, very, very enjoyable. Yeah, awesome man, thank you again. Okay, thank you. Ooh.